you have these you know schools that are giving traditional scholarships right that say basically steve come to our law school we want to give you a full ride you know condition of the fact that you're finishing the top 25 percent of your class after the first year you can continue to have that full ride which to some students are like whoa like obviously i'm really smart they're giving me a full ride and then they they get there and they're like wow this is really freaking competitive and you know oh my god you were off also offered a full ride and you were not everybody's going to keep their full ride right so there i guess um the aba did a study in, of the students who were offered conditional scholarships in 2017 and not to blur you with the math um it turned out like 28 percent of the one else who walked in with a conditional scholarship walked out of their first year of law school without a scholarship so they're paying sticker price because they didn't make the grade second and third year right which is again not a position that you want to be in because ideally you know pres presumably right you're offered a conditional scholarship because what the school did was they bought your number right they loved your lsat score steve that you took l you know your lsat course you killed it all right and now we want to buy your number because that's one number we have to report to the ABA and gets factored in the U.S. News report and will improve our rankings. So we want to buy your score. We'll give you a, a one-year tuition free at School X, and you get to keep that free tuition if you maintain this certain GPA. But because of the 1L grading curve, mathematically, everyone cannot keep their, um, their conditional scholarship. Therefore, they find themselves in a position where they um you know they either have to pay sticker price for the remaining two years at a school that might not have been their first choice and they only went there because of the money right so they might have they might have gotten into a higher ranked school um and said no no i'm going to go to this school because they're offering me a free ride well now i'm paying full full tuition for the last two years of law school which again 50 grand right a year so 100 grand and in the back of my head, I also know that all the top jobs are gone to the students who did well their first year. So, like, what do I do? Do I fish or cut bait at that point? You know, I don't know. It's a tough question. So, yeah, yeah. So, like, when I look at law preview, for especially those students, I'm like, are you insane? Like, you know, I am a, you know, I, I might seem like a little bit of a rebel and a risk taker. I am not, all right? I am, you know, a belt with suspenders kind of person. And somebody's going to give me that kind of an offer, you know, to go and do something. Uh, we have a lot of students who come and say, like, I'm just simply taking this course to make sure that I maintain the minimum GPA that I don't have to pay full freight for law school, um, which is a good. And we had a kid from Creighton Law School who did that. Quinn, I forget his last name. Uh, but he ended up number one in his class. But also was like, hey, the only reason why I took this is because I you know, had a $30,000 a $36,000 a year scholarship and I wanted to maintain it. And I'm like, well, you did a little bit better for yourself than that too. It's like, yeah, it worked out pretty well. Well, so. to circle back to what we were saying earlier, once again, it's about being risk averse, right? right. Future exactly. lawyers being risk averse. You want to keep your scholarship. You want to keep your class rank. 1L grades the way to do it. How do you ensure top 1L grades? Know what you're going to do before you walk in. Right. And the other beautiful thing about it is if you plan it right, if you do it the right way, right? You might not, I was not a student who they were offering any money to. I think they, they looked at me when I was, and again, you know, I was probably the crappiest student, you know, walking into law school. You, you could have imagined. Um, so when it came to, you know, my second year and I had an opportunity to transfer, you know, there's a lot of power walking down to the, you know, the Dean of Financial Aid and being like, hey, Dean, I got a problem. And they're like, what are you, what's your problem? You're number four in the class. You have no problem. I'm like, ah, oh, here's my problem. I got this letter from NYU and Jesus, Christ, they want me to come down there and finish about like two years there. And, you know, immediately what the school was thinking is, okay, we lose this guy. We lose a metric that we need to report to the ABA. Um, what their, uh, what their, um, are they employable within 10 months of graduation? So anybody who's number four in their class is going to get a job, you know, secure a job the summer after their first year, their second year of law school, all right? They'll have an offer walking into their third year. Um, also, we know that the best correlation of how well somebody does on the first try of the bar exam is their first year grades. So essentially, these two metrics are going to walk down state and go to our competitor, NYU. 
Um, and just like Verizon doesn't like to lose a customer to AT&T, law schools will offer retention scholarships. So kids who like myself were like, they weren't offering me any you know, scholarship money to come. They thought they were doing me a favor by letting me in the first place. You know, these kids now are turning around and saying, hey, I got a $10,000 retroactive scholarship, right? They, they even applied it to my first year because they didn't want me to transfer. They wanted to retain me here. So that's another, you know, it just, there, there's, a, there's so much that you can do uh, with your, with a, you know, a, the commodity of a, a first year transcript and a good first year transcript, it's like, it's like a commodity, but it's like water, right? Like it evaporates very quickly. So you have to know how to exercise it. What do I want to use that commodity to transfer? What do I want to use that, that commodity to parlay myself into a really good job or a job opportunity that, you know, frankly, you may not like working in a law firm, you know, in a big firm. And that might not be you want. Listen, the last thing we need is another, you know, big law attorney. You know, we need right now, especially right now, uh, you know, in the current state of affairs, like we need the people who are really freaking passionate about the law and are looking to, you know, to change things, please God, for the better. Like go to Washington, all right? Lock some people up down there. I won't say who, all right? <laughs> but like, you know, like start rattling some skulls down there. That, that's where we need good lawyers, right? So you might think like, oh, I'm going to do public interest. It doesn't really matter. Um, how well I do my first year. Well, let me, I'll tell you, A, most public interest lawyers go to big law firms to pay off their debt, right? And even if they don't go there for, um, yeah, I wrote an article about this uh, on a blog, uh, you know, that the, you know, most public interest uh, associate summer, spend a summer as a summer associate because they can make 40 grand, right? And pay down their debt. And, you know, the last one is, you know, the, the, the most famous you know, example of that is Barack Obama right, at Sidley, um, you yeah, know, was a summer associate with no intention of ever practicing there. Um, but, you know, hey, look, you want to throw some money my way? Like, I'd be a fool to say no um, and pay down my debt. Or a lot of you know, folks will go there, spend a couple of years in a law firm, get some good experience, and then go and save the world. And God knows we need, we need a lot of, we need people out there to save the world. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.